So as a part uh, as part of the series of videos I'm doing about using uh, Office 2010 and more specifically Word 2010 to write assignments and other things like this um, as part of your academic writing process, so um, dissertations, reports, blah blah blah, I thought I'd share with you a few really really funky tips and tricks that we can use um, and tools in, in Word 2010 that really really help us out when we're trying to write stuff. So um, I thought I'd cover um, these things called styles. Now, if you've had been running Office 2010 or Word 2010, you would have seen this ribbon at the top, and you might have seen these styles, and you might have been thinking, "What on earth is this all about?" And you might not have actually used it. Um, now, I would in strongly encourage you to uh, do is actually use it to the fullest extent because it makes things so much easier. It makes formatting easier. It makes doing table of contents easier. It just makes things easier. So what we're going to do is we're going to create uh, as a bullshit title, something like William Shakespeare because this is, we've um, got some BS quote in here from um, Wikipedia. So we're going to call this William Shakespeare. Um, and once that's done, we can then, um, well, back in the olden days, what we used to do is we used to do bold and then like make it really, really big and then maybe do some underlining action and it, it looks all right and, you know, it's fine. Um, maybe you want to do that, but it just makes stuff like making table of contents a bit difficult and I'd say again I don't think it looks as professional so we can easily just go tight on that now you need to be aware that really the only, the only two things that really get picked up or the only things that get picked up in your table of contents are headings now when you do headings and uh, heading one and then heading two and then once you've done he uh, heading two it'll come up with a heading three and it'll go down and down and down all the way like that but it really is only headings that are picked up in the table of contents titles are not um, so if you if you think about having titles, then titles are not picked up, so you need to be aware of that. Um, but headings definitely are. Now um, what you can do is we'll, we'll just insert a few uh, bullshit um, headings as well. So we'll go to introduction. Um, and we'll go heading one on that. We'll set this as a quote. Um, so we'll go quote, and because this is sort of like down from our introduction, we'll go um, we'll go heading two. Um, and as you can see, there heading three is automatically popped up as well. Now we can edit all these themes uh, as we wish, if we so wish. Um, I'm just going to go down here and into uh, into one there. Um, so we've got all that set up. We're going to set that as heading one. So that's all done. And that's all done. That's it. Um, now another thing we can do is say, like I said, you can modify these. So say heading t heading three, for instance, you actually wanted it to be like subtitle, and we can easily do that. So we can unbold it um, and then maybe make it make it italicized as well. So then that's basically um, that's completely rubbish. Um, what we need to do is because I've just set that as the wrong heading, so we unbold that and then set that as italicized. And as you can see, it's automatically updated our text there. And the other thing we can do the same for um, for body text, so we can go modify um, and go to 12 for that, and that's all very well and good because I know a lot of institutions usually require you to have it in point 12 or point 10 or something weird like that. So you can easily do that, and and it actually automatically updates. So every every bit of um, every bit of body text there is now automatically set to 12 so we don't have to manually go through and do that now another thing I like to use are these things called themes in uh, Old Word 2010 now these make the document look a bit funkier and it makes things coloured a bit um, but what I usually go for is something called Austin um, it just think, makes things look a bit more um, sort of outdoorsy this is the, the degree I'm doing um, and, and it makes things look a bit better now as you've noticed it's changed the font as well now for us as, as people that are writing academically we don't want to change that font. We want to use our, our default um, institutional fonts that we're allowed to use. Now usually that's something like Verdana, Arial and Times New Roman. Personally, uh, as a personal preference, I absolutely hate Times New Roman with a passion. I think it looks awful, so I always go for Arial. Um, now with with stuff like the fonts, obviously you can actually update the whole text without having to play around. I mean you can do stuff like that as well. Um, but it all depends. You can also change these if you so wish. But then once we've done that, I mean that's pretty much us good to go. Um, or maybe we'll insert a few other uh, BS um, uh, titles as well, so stuff like references maybe, and maybe a bibliography. Um, if I can actually spell, which I don't, yeah, I can. I can spell apparently. So we'll set those up as um, as standards of headings, heading one, and then heading uh, heading one as well. So we'll put these on random pages, so we'll put uh, maybe conclusion we'll put on page 2, um, that's all good, and maybe we'll put references on page 3, just give you sort of some sort of idea, and maybe we'll go bibliography on page 4. So once we've done that, that's that's really really good. I mean, that, you know, we've got our, we've got a document. We've finished our dissertation. We've finished our, um, um, our our assignment, and now we want to insert a table of contents. Now this is really really easy. All we need to do is we need to go into references and table of contents, and then just do. I usually go for automatic table one, and then as you can see here, it automatically includes 
um, uh, and actually automatically does page numbers and things like this on your contents page. Of course, if you write in something like a dissertation, this will probably be quite long, so you'll have different appendices, and you'll have all these other bits and pieces, blah, blah, blah. But this makes, makes our job a hell of a lot easier at the end of our dissertation or at the end of our report when we want to do table of contents, we can easily do it with a click of a button without having to go through manually every single page and find out introductions on page one, conclusions on page two, blah, 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 and all this. And if you've got something like a 100 page document, it can really, really save you time. And it can, you know, when you're really stressed about something and the deadline's coming up, and you're like, oh no, I've not got the time to do my, my table of contents, blah, blah, blah. Um, this can really, really help you out. Now, another thing that really, really is funky in, in Word, which has again been around for quite a while now, is um, is in inserting page um, page numbers, um, and this is really really easy. All you need to do is go into insert. I don't know why I went under page layout there. Go under insert. Um, go into a page number. You've got an option of the of, of several things. Now usually it's at the bottom of the page. You can set it as um, as left, uh, not left, right <laughs> at the bottom of the page, just with the number, which is all right and good. That's all funky. But what I usually like to do to make things as clear as is humanly possible. Um, I actually like to um, go and insert um, the second, oh, actually the third one down. So this is, um, uh, yeah, um, bold numbers um, one and, and things like this. But I usually go for bold numbers three because basically what that allows it just allows like page one or four. So you know how the a how many how many pages are in the document and b what page number you're on. This makes things a lot lot easier I find for for lecturing staff and those that are going to mark it. Um, and that's you know that makes things really really funky. Um, and that's pretty much literally pretty much all you really need to know about um, about Office 2010 and Word 2010 in terms of formatting your document. I would strongly encourage you if you do not already use styles in uh, Word 2010 because it makes things so so much easier when it comes to stuff like table of contents and just formatting things is so good once you've got the formatting set up so say for instance you don't want the heading to be so big or maybe you want it to be bigger perhaps you want it to be 0.16 you can change things you want and as you as I say it automatically updates these as well so it'll automatically update everyone you've got set the heading one as a style will automatically be updated you can change things around and it's really really handy for that um, and you know again it just makes things so much easier for you um, but of course if you liked if you like the video of course like the video um, uh, subscribe and uh, comment because comments really do help and it actually pushes the ratings up for the video which is really really good um, of course if this really really does help you out share it with your colleagues share it with your friends and things like this um, and apart from that uh, happy computing <laughs>